Welcome to Sister Power. I'm Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Our topic for this episode, patriarchy unhinged. Time to roar and continue fighting for our body, our sovereignty body. The Supreme Court overturned the landmark Roe versus Wade decision in a six to three vote. Sister Power guest, Attorney Daphne Barbie Wooten, Dr. Patricia Jones Blessman, all the way here from Chicago, Illinois. I am house. Yay. And my co host, Attorney Leslie Matthews, will share their perspectives today. Ladies, welcome to Sister Power. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you for inviting us to be on this platform with you. Thank you. You know, this is, uh, we've had a month this month. You know, first I was, you know, at Rona. And then, of course, that same month, week later, I was hit with Roe, responding to Roe. So before we delve into Roe versus Wade, let's start with some good news. So Judge Katanji Brown Jackson. It came making history as a first Black woman to, to serve on the high court. So Attorney Daphne Barbie Wooten, with us, give us your heartfelt thoughts on this occasion. Oh, it's historic. It's, we're living in historic times. Ketanji Brown Jackson is the very first African-American woman to sit on the United States Supreme Court. For years, 233 years, the United States Supreme Court has had many justices and they have been predominantly white and no black females. Um, so this is a, a big historic occasion. She's qualified, eminently qualified. Uh, we all watched her when she handled herself in a very judicious manner. Um, when she was questioned by various senators who asked such ridiculous and racist questions and sexist questions like, am I a woman? Or, that was Ted Cruz's question to her. I mean, it was just horrific. But um, despite all of that, she made it. And it was the deciding vote of um, our first African-American vice president of the United States, Kamala Harris. And there she's going to be sitting for life. I'm awesome. looking forward to reading her decision. Mm -hmm. You know, that just hit me when you said for life. Yeah. Life. All right. Well, let's go to and our. She's, she's young too, right? Isn't yep. she like 50? She's 51. Okay. So we got good 30 years coming in, right? Yeah, that's or right. 40. <laughs> wow. Let's go to our co host, uh, attorney Leslie Matthews. Discuss with our sister power viewers about the meaning of Roe versus Wade. Talk to us about the legal definition of Roe versus Wade. Yeah, so just looking back at Roe versus Wade, um, Roe versus Wade was decided in the 70s. So we have over 50 years of precedent, which said that abortion is a fundamental right, that it is, that it is your fundamental protected right to access whole, I call it whole women's health care. Um, I think that abortion is health care and it is a human right. Um, and so then looking now to the Dobbs decision and Dobbs um, decision that overturned Roe versus Wade, and we have to look at where this came out of, Mississippi, okay, the deep south, <laughs> um, which looked at a question of you know, they had a law that banned nearly all abortions after 15 weeks. And so they, they wanted to question that, that legislation and whether or not that was conforming to what we had as precedent for 50 years. And so as we're looking at it now, what this is doing is the first time in, 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 the, in the United States history that we're taking away a fundamentally protected right. And we have to look at, when you talk about the impact, the impact that this has is disproportionately on um, Black birthing people, Black women, uh, lower income, people that 
don't have access to this care. And in Mississippi particularly, they only had one abortion clinic. And so we're looking at a disastrous impact on uh, our access to whole women's health care and the very first time that um, a fundamental right. And so I think you picked the good title, Patriarchy Unhinged, because this is patriarchy unhinged. This is them coming after our right, especially doubling down on Black women. Mm -hmm. Well, we have on our panel today a license, a clinical license, a psychologist. And I want to ask Dr. Patricia Jones Blessman, what are the psychological on mental health impact of caring and a wanted pregnancy to term? Well, first of all, you know, 45% of all pregnancies are unplanned. So the biggest gift that we can give children is actually to come into this world wanted and not be the result of the condom broke, the pill, I was sick and the, I threw up the pill while I was having food poisoning, the IUD didn't work, uh, you know, all the things, and we know that birth control methods have a failure rate, all of them. So the biggest gift we can give children is to be, is to come into this world wanted. There's a difference between wanted children versus those in which the, 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 the birth is unintentional or unplanned. A million, before road, um, there were a million abortions per year. Abortions was the most common illegal activity outside of gambling and narcotics before road. So now we're going to start criminalizing women for this behavior for wanting to get an abortion. And we also know that an estimated 10,000 10, women before road, road died annually from complications following poorly performed procedures or what we commonly call back alley abortions. Um, well, so when we think about what is uh, the psychological impact on, of, of having unintended children or unwanted children or unplanned children, it not only impacts the woman, and we can, we're going to talk about that in a little bit, but also impacts her other living children as well as her, the mate, her partner or her mate or her, her husband. The Journal of Pediatrics looked at uh, what impact an unplanned pregnancy or unintended pregnancy has on the other, the mother's other living children. And what two of the things that they found was that the children would have, would score lower on developmental milestones and they were more likely to live in poverty as a result. Now I've, I've worked with kids who, as young as seven or eight, who said things to me like, she can't feed me. So why is she bringing another mouth into the, that we that's gonna have to be fed? I mean, children, and so you gotta think about so mothers are thinking about what impact another baby might have to their family unit. Yes, there are unwanted pregnancy impact, uh, psychological impacts for women who have to carry to term a child, both not only in terms of increased stress, increased perinatal and postpartum depression, suicidal ideation, uh, actual commit, uh, commission of suicide, but, in, but the most horrific uh, incidences of psychological impact is when you have cases of incest and rape. What children, young children, 9, 10, 11, 12 years old, or any woman, it is almost horrific and barbaric to make them, to force them to carry to term a child or, or a fetus or into uh, during a pregnancy after, as a result of a rape or an assault. The, if you've, because I have treated women who have gone through this and particularly little girls, I'm talking nine, 10, 11, and 12, they are forever damaged behind that experience. The rest of their lives. I mean, there's, there's you know, we don't have enough. We cannot, we cannot repair the psychological rift and the harm emotionally that that causes a 9, 10, 11, 12. First of all, it's bad enough, but it, even if they wanted it, okay? But it's, it's, it's horrific because they've been raped. And I'm, I'm old enough to be, you know, have been in this building business back in the 80s 
when rape of a, if a father raped his 10 year old daughter, it wasn't even a crime back then. We fought to even make it a crime, to call it assault, to call it rape. So, you know, what we are going through or what, it not only, it makes it almost, it, it just seems barbaric yeah. that we would even stoop to that level, that yeah. we would not even allow an abortion and give the child or the young person or the woman some agency in their life to be able to have some control over what is happening to them. Because that, that is a healing thing to be able to say, I don't want this child. And for some women, it's important to be able to say that and to do that and to have that abortion. I've worked with women who said that, you know, they felt that the fears that were growing inside of them was an abomination. It was, yeah. you know, it was like, ugh. Yeah, that's a lot. Girl, don't get me started. Yeah, you know, <laughs> that's a lot. I'm sitting here biting my lip listening to you, you know, because it's, it's just all vital. It's all vital. You know, and Daphne, you have the opportunity to attend a Roe versus Wade protest here in Honolulu. Tell us about the temperature uh, of the people that attended this protest. Let me tell you, the temperature here in Honolulu, in Hawaii, where it's still legal to have abortion, is hot and getting hotter, okay? It's not going to mm -hmm. cool down until the law is changed back to allow a woman to do what she wants with her body. It's between her and her physician. It's just going to get hotter and hotter. And as I stated before we started this program, I got my boxing gloves on. I think we all do. We're ready. We're ready. Right. Um, there have been a lot of protests in Honolulu um, and on, you know, on Maui, I understand, and Big Island and Kauai. Um, because of the Dobbs decision, which overturned Roe versus Wade, we have uh, one young woman had sewn a crocheted uterus on her uh, halter top and walked through Waikiki. We have signs, variety of signs, and a lot of um, a lot of people, mainly women, but some young men, um, I'd say in university age, have been attending as well. And um, that's good because we also have people who have big bullhorns who follow us and start calling um, the protesters murderers and things of that sort. So there's a, a real heated argument going on. And, um, you know, the Supreme Court, the U.S. Supreme Court that did away with the right to choose because it's a right to choose whether you have a child or not, um, really did not consider the consequences of telling women they have no control over their bodies. For example, in the news, there was a 10 year old girl from Ohio, where I think you're from Sharon, she was 10 years old, raped, raped. And um, she had to go across lines to Indiana to get an abortion. And they talked to the doctor who did it. And the doctor said, in two more weeks, Indiana may not have the ability to do an abortion. Um, right. And who's gonna take this 10 year old girl if she's raped by a family member? Who's gonna take her across lines? Who's gonna examine her to tell her that she's pregnant? Uh, you know, some girls don't know, they're 10 years old. Um, right. So this is a real serious problem. And um, really, uh, 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 you know, the temperature is super hot and getting hotter. Well, for our sister power view, viewers, let's just go over a few companies uh, before I go to you, uh, Leslie. These companies are covering abortion travel expenses for, for employees, Starbucks, Uber, Disney, Tesla, PayPal, JP Morgan Chase, uh, Zillow. So these are just a few of the companies that are willing to cover uh, this expense expensive uh, expense. This is exactly what it is because it's unexpected. But I received, uh, Leslie, a question from Sequoia. Uh, and this is a question she has for you. The reversal of role versus weight affects all women. But which demographic of women does it hurt the most and how? Yeah, I, I you know, I, and I, I will attest to what um, both of these women have said before me, the temperature is hot and how are we going to care for people? And the people that this is going to impact the most is people of color, uh, folks that are from lower socioeconomic um, groups, folks that don't have access to care, that can't afford to get on a plane and come to a place like Hawaii that has legalized abortion, 
Um, and we have to be mindful of this because, and I love that Dr. Blessman brought this up because we also need to think about like the right to choose and the right and, and the ability to take care of that baby from the womb to the tomb. So mm. we're also talking about those things, those nuances that she talked about navigating care for the child, um, mental health care for the child, feeding these children. And one of my pastors from back in Dallas, Pastor Tim Ross posted on Instagram and he said, the church better get really real and we better start redirecting some of our funds to be able to take care of these single moms and their babies. You know, we're sending funds over across, you know, to help other places, which is great. But now we're going to have a lot more children that we need to take care of. And we're going to have a lot more children that will be ending up, unfortunately, um, a, 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 available for adoption. And so we have to really, really think about these things. And, and as I went and marched and protest, the women are mad. And we have people that are standing there with us mad. We're thinking of ways, do we need to start funds to uh, start, a, a, you know, set up a couch surfing network so that people can stay in our homes when they come to Hawaii to access this care. So when you think about the people that, and, and one, of, one of my really good friends, another person um, that went to law school, uh, she held a sign and she said, your mistresses talking to um, our legislators will still be able to get an abortion. Like, let's be real, because the people in power, the people with access to wealth, will still be able to get the things that they're snatching away from us. Okay. And, right. and, and it's just, abortions will still happen. They will be less safe. We will have more women dying. We know that black women have the highest rate, have some of the highest rates, if not the highest of, 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 of mortality as they're giving birth. And so, you know, how are we settling in our souls that we're okay with 10 uh, women, uh, young girls that are 10 years old being forced to carry a child? How are, we, how are we taking away that choice? We just want you to be able to have a choice to have that child or to not have that child. And if Love we're gonna be pro-life, it's gotta be from the womb to the tomb. No, we have to care about our children. We have to adequately fund um, uh, uh, our, our, our Medicaid programs. We have to adequately fund. And, and, and just real quick in closing on this question, whenever you spoke about those companies that will be willing to pay for their uh, employees to access whole women's health care. I also want to be really concerned about how they're going to spend their uh, lobbying dollars and who they're and whose campaigns they're going to fund, because we need to get this codified into legislation immediately. It needs to be a law that is that that we protect abortion because we know the Supreme Court isn't going to do it. And as we sit here right now. The justices are saying that the protests that are happening outside of their home are, are, are illegal. And so, but we know that, are, are we going to roll back then the first, the first amendment that protects the right to redress your grievances before your government? So hear us roar and hear us word loudly. So I'm going to be watching where those monies are going from those companies that say they, um, that they, they support the right, the, the, the right to choose. So. A time to roar, a time to roar. And, you know, D.L. Hughley, and I want your thought on this, Patricia, I'm going to come to you. He, D.L. Hughley, comedian, actor, this is what he had to say. One of the things you can be sure of is that white people, white men specifically, will never do anything that infringes upon their rights, whether it's gay marriage, whether it's an interracial marriage, they won't do it. What they're going to do is roll back the reflections of others. Well, absolutely. I mean, you know, you know, we make no mistake about it. The Constitution was written to protect the rights of white males and a specific group of white males, white male landowners. I don't know if anybody's read it recently, but go back and look at the original document, the, the original document. And the three justices, uh, my Daphne can speak more intelligently or deeply about this, but the, as I understand it, the three uh, justices that were recently appointed, they are nativists, meaning that they look at the original intent 
And so if the, the original intent of the constitution was to protect the, the rights of white male landowners, period, the end, end of story. So there's a whole lot of rights that we have right now that's not listed in the constitution as it was originally written. So all of that is subject to be overthrown, but I'm not the legal expert here. I'm just trying to catch up with you ladies. Uh, oh. But I will say this, Leslie, you were right on the money when you said we got to be, we need to be care. We need to care for children from the womb to the tomb because right now the United States is the only uh, uh, industrialized nation that hasn't even ratified rights for children. So we don't even take care of our children who are already born. They don't have rights. They don't have a right to an education. They don't have a right to uh, safe uh, water, drinking water. They don't have the right to safe, uh, clean air. They don't have the right to good, good food. And so if you're going to be so concerned about some cells that are growing in a woman's body, what are you going to do about you, you don't you don't want to abort them before they before they're born, which is certainly are aborting them after they're born. Ooh, say good that. Point. There is That's a good point. Say that. Daphne, before I go on to another question to you, is there something that you would like to add to this? Uh, exactly what Dr. Blessman says. The Constitution was written by white men, and guess what? They own slaves. Black men were not included in the Constitution. Women were not included in the Constitution. Native Americans were three fifths of a human. That's it was all very racist. And if you're going to get Supreme Court justices who say, "Oh, we need to look at the original Constitution," we're going back to slavery days. America is should not be going backwards. We should be going forward. Okay. And uh, this is a scary time, so people need to wake up, get <laughs> heated up, and fight and vote. You know, November oh, yeah. is yeah. coming. We, we, look, women, we are mad as hell. All right. So each and everyone listening to this, and if you listen to it, talk to your friends and family and you go to the polls. Start checking out who was doing what, because this is serious, people. So if you have two lawyers here and a licensed clinical psychologist, well, know, okay, don't get me started. I went off on something else here, but it's <laughs> just, you know, I, it's just upset. I'm just, it, this is really sickening. But, you know, we have five minutes left. Leslie, now, you know, Les, you take two, and Patricia, you can take one, and Daphne, you take one, and I'll take the rest. Hit it, Patricia. What do you want to close out with? Well, you know, I always try to find a silver lining in, uh, in every situation, even the most disastrous, disastrous ones. So the silver lining in this one is, I'm hoping that women are going to wake up, or women across the spectrum. You gotta remember, there was a certain group of women who voted for <laughs> that one, and he was the one that brought in those, that, those Supreme Court justices. So we need to be a lot more politically astute and vote. Daphne? I agree, and also point out that it was a woman, Amy Coney Barrett, who was nominated by Trump as a Supreme Court justice, and she voted to do away with abortion, too. So women and men who are thinking about people of the United States reputation and protecting our women's bodies, um, not just women's bodies, but every um, person, giving us a right to privacy, we need to be concerned. We need to stop this nonsense in the bud before it gets worse, because they've already told, Clarence Thomas already said, we're going to hit gay rights next. So wake up. My co-host. Yes, co-host. Well, you know, and that's the thing, because I was on a plane uh, flying back to Hawaii, and I got a message when I got off from a gay interracial couple who was fiercely concerned about their future and wanted to uh, meet and talk about the what, how do they legally protect their family? And so if you think that this issue of the Dobbs decision overturning Roe versus Wade does not impact you, I say it does, because this is the very first time that we build it back. And I, and I hope it's okay to share this. When you talked about being engaged civically and in voting, um, Daphne and I are both members um, of the African American Lawyers Association. And we are gonna be hosting Governor's Talk Story because here in Hawaii, especially in Maui County, everybody from the governor on down is on the ballot. 
So I want to invite you all to our sessions where we are talking with folks and you can get more information by going to bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash gov talk story and get to know the people and ask them the questions. Do you support my right to choose? Do you support being able to support my child after the child is born? And just in closing, the person who's sitting there getting ready to make this really hard decision, this decision is for you and your doctor. And we stand with you. I've got my, I don't know if you can see it, but I've got my Planned Parenthood stands with you shirt on today. Yeah. We stand with you. We love you. You are cared for. You are here for a reason and a purpose. And it doesn't matter what nine people have to say about your life. You do what's right for you and we'll stand with you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Well said. Well said. Well said. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Patricia. We're heated. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Patricia Jones Blessman. Thank you, Attorney Daphne Barbie Wooten. And thank you to my host, Attorney Leslie Matthews. I want to leave the sister viewers with this. Next time the national anthem is played, every woman and girl should take a knee. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Aloha. 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 Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.